Hey guys, it's me, Dr. May, here on DBT TV. Um, today we're going to do a mindfulness skill called How Skills. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover. I'm going to pull that up for us. Here it is. Aha. Ah, okay, so this is part of the mindfulness module. Okay, so what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is fully awake and embodied awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment. It has to do with focused attention, open awareness, and also kind intention. Okay, so um, before you do the how skills, it's important to review the video for what skills. That's observe, describe, and participate. Because the how skills are how you could do those skills more effectively and even better. Okay, so how do we observe, describe, and participate? By doing the how skills. Okay, so first, non-judgmentally. So if you're judging something, you're not really observing it clearly. You're just observing your judgment. So it's really important when you are doing mindfulness and observing to do it in a non-judgmental fashion, okay? So just objectively acknowledge what's going on. Just notice it. Try to accept each moment as it is um, and see the reality clearly. Um, when you do judge, and I'm saying when, not if, because we all do judge at least sometimes because we're human, right? We have to at least recognize that our judgments are judgments. Because sometimes we think, well, if I think it, it must be true. So for example, if I judge myself and I say, well, I'm no good, I can't just assume that's true. That's just my judgment. Or if I say, you know, that guy's a jerk. And someone might say, well, yeah, that's true. It's like, yeah, well, it's a judgment. Maybe you both have the same judgment, but it's still a judgment. All right. So we have to recognize what's a judgment and what's a fact. Okay. That's super important. And if you're working on this skill, be patient with yourself. No one's gonna be 100% judgment free. And if you do judge, don't judge the fact that you're judging. Just acknowledge it and keep moving on, okay? Oh, oh yeah, that's right, I was judgmental, okay. All right, so next time I'll try a little harder and be a little less judgmental, okay? So don't beat yourself up or judge yourself over the judging. All right, so um, another thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that um, chances are if you're in DBT, you're struggling with your emotions and regulating your emotions. So non-judgmental thinking is super important if you wanna be better at regulating your emotions. Because if you start judging a situation, it's like throwing logs on the emotional fire. And it just makes the emotions more intense. So if you think about somebody and you start to you know, ramp yourself up by saying, oh man, he's such a jerk and I can't stand him. He's such an idiot, and why did he do that? And what's wrong with him? The more you keep layering that on, like the more upset you're gonna get, okay? So if you catch yourself in that mode, it's time to step back and try to get back to a non-judgmental stance, okay? So if you're non-judgmental, it's like, it's letting the emotional fire die back down. It doesn't make it worse, like we say in the stress tolerance. It kind of just lets it pass. Whereas you keep reigniting it if you keep bringing the emotions, I mean, and the, um, the judgments back. Okay, so here's a little uh, test for us. Okay, a little practice. So here's a few pictures that it's probably pretty easy to judge. All right, so just notice right now the judgments that might be coming to your mind as you look at these three pictures. Okay, and it's okay if you're judging, most people do. But just recognize the fact that those aren't facts, they're just your judgments. So next, try to look at the pictures again and, and try to observe them in a non-judgmental way. What kind of words would you put to them if you were being non-judgmental? You were just describing, like we say in the what skills, what's actually in these pictures, okay? And you might come up with something very different. And the feeling you get judging them versus not judging them might be very different. Okay, so the next how skill is one mindfully. Okay, so this is about eliminating the multitasking that we often do, which kind of could create more stress for us, and to try to slow it down and do one thing at a time mindfully. Okay, so like the picture there, 
let's say you're enjoying um, a bowl of strawberries, okay? And you really just like enjoy taking in the experience of eating the strawberry one at a time as you eat each one, okay? Sometimes when we eat, and I know I could be accused of this too, I'm doing multiple things. Maybe I'm eating and watching TV, or I'm eating and I'm playing on my tablet, or I'm eating and talking to somebody, or eating and working at my computer, okay? So it's hard to be mindful when you're doing a lot of things at once. So if you try to slow it down, do one thing at a time, you can get that benefit of a mindfulness practice doing that activity. So that's super important, one, mindfully. And if you find that if you're trying to do that one activity and you get distracted, it's okay. You just let it go and bring your mind back to that one thing, okay? And as we talked about with focused attention, which is one of the three pillars of mind, this helps to calm and center the mind. So doing one mindful practices with focused attention kind of like gives us more clarity, more calm. All right, so here's some examples, all right? So when we do mindfulness practice in a one mindful way, we might choose to just focus on our breath, right? Our breath is always with us. It's always available for us to focus on. And you could even narrow it down by saying, well, I'm just gonna focus on the breath um, at the point of my nostrils and just the feel of it in and out right there. Or you might say, well, I'm just gonna focus on the parts of my body that are moving each time I breathe in and out and settle your mind there. Maybe feeling your lungs or your belly move in and out. Um, another thing is if you do a mindfulness practice with your eyes wide open, which might help, especially if you're too much in your head right now, just focus on one thing in the room. Um, if you have a candle, like in the picture, just focus on the candle. It might be a spot on the floor. It might be someone's shoe. Um, whatever it is, just focus on that one spot. And if you get distracted, bring it back to that one spot. Okay, so this is a little more grounding because your eyes are open. Another thing you could try is a mantra. So what is a mantra? A mantra is a word or a phrase that you would repeat over and over again during a mindfulness practice. Okay, so in the picture on the right, um, that symbol there, um, it's kind of the word OM, which is a popular one. Um, and you could say OM to yourself over and over. There's also another one a little longer, OM Mani Padme Hum. Um, there's other ones in other languages, but you could also do English, okay? One of the advantages of doing ones in other languages is you may not have any emotional associations to it. Like if you did the word peace, that's a word that you know very well in English. But if you did om, it's kind of a neutral word. So maybe it wouldn't um, trigger anything for you. It's just kind of something neutral you're going to try to say. And again, every time your mind wanders from that mantra or word or phrase, you just bring it back to the mantra. And it gives you something, something for your mind to do and focus on to settle your mind in a one mindful way. Okay. And the third part of the how skills is effectively. Okay, so I see this as most associated with wise mind. And of course, when we do mindfulness practice and we do what skills and how skills, it helps us to get into wise mind. That's one of the real good bonuses about it. Um, so as well as doing it during a mindfulness practice, it has the bonus of clearing our minds so that we can make wise mind decisions. Okay, so being effective is super important. And this involves some different things. I just put a few components here. So one is focusing on our goals and values. What's the big picture here? Is the action I'm about to take going to lead me closer to my goals or further away from my goals? Right? Let's say I'm in the hospital and I want to get discharged. Is this action I'm going to take going to bring me closer to discharge or further away from discharge, right? Um, the next one is letting go of ego. That means like letting go of your selfish concerns or things that kind of revolve around you and your personal needs um, in a kind of very self-focused sort of a way. Um, so sometimes, you know, it, it pays to just let go of being right or letting go of having the last word or letting go of just having your way just for the sake of having your way. Sometimes it's more effective in an interpersonal situation to be more flexible in that regard. And it's better to like give up something to get something. Final, oh, so not finally, um, but playing by the rules. Ugh. You know, sometimes we get ourselves in trouble and create so much more stress in our life because we're not playing by the rules, right? Like if I'm in the hospital and I decide I want to smoke and then I get caught, 
and then I get in trouble or I lose a privilege, it's going to create so much more stress for me. Or if, let's say I'll get caught with cigarettes and now they're patting me down and they're searching me and they're searching my room. And I could be really upset about that. That's going to create more, much more emotional mind, right? But if I played by the rules and I recognize if I have cigarettes, this is going to happen, you know, it might eliminate that whole thing, right? Or if I'm in the community and I decide to speed down the highway at 80 miles an hour and then I get caught by a cop, I might be really pissed off that I have a ticket now, right? But if I played by the rules and was generally in the speed limit, that wouldn't have happened, okay? So that's a great way to be effective and eliminate a whole lot of unnecessary stress. Next, of course, use your skills, especially DBT skills, okay? Um, if you're acting skillfully in the situation you're in, and when you're clear about what that situation is, it, it's gonna have a much better chance of leading to a positive outcome than if you do something that involves your target behaviors or other kinds of impulsive behaviors. Um, and finally, focusing on the long-term rather than the, just the short-term. So this is tied into the focusing on your goals, right? So it's thinking of consequences and not just what's gonna make me feel good right now, but what's gonna also benefit me down the road. I recently heard um, a talk by somebody named Matt Kahn, who's a really great speaker. I definitely check him out on YouTube. And he says, with this choice, Whose life am I improving? That's kind of a way to think about it, right? If I do this, am I really improving my life? Am I improving someone else's life? Hmm, good question, right? Okay, so that's the effectively. And with that, we completed the house skills. All right, we did pretty good today. Not too long, but short and sweet, but really important, okay? So be mindful. Use your what skills, your how skills, try to put it all together and uh, be patient with the progress because it takes a little while. But um, these are the core mindfulness skills that are gonna get you going, that are gonna get you to be able to practice mindfulness and reap all the benefits that can come from mindfulness. All right, so good luck with everything and I'll see you the next time. Bye guys.